Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Email Exchanges. I'm absolutely honored to have so many questions come through this week and uh, really looking forward to getting those answers out to you. So we've got a few questions to answer today. I've gone through, I've answered them as in-depth as I possibly can, and I really appreciate every single person who sent these questions in. Remember, guys, if you want your question answered, just send an email to ee at tradedelicious.com. That's ee at tradedelicious.com and I'll get those questions answered for you here live on Trade Delicious. Without further ado, let's get into it. What role do fundamentals play in your trading strategy? I see you constantly talking about fundamentals, yet I don't see you executing on any positions for them. Can you give us an example of a time when you use fundamental analysis to make a trading decision? Yeah, very good. I think there's a, a couple levels to your question here, which I want to dive into. First and foremost, I want to, and this is something I spoke with Aaron about recently as well. I want to stress that the reason I look into fundamentals and the reason I'm so heavily involved in understanding, researching, and really coming to grips with the fundamentals of these assets is more on a passion basis. So, I'm really interested in these figures. I'm really interested in understanding how the economy looks as a whole. Now, this is directly associated with currencies as that's where I trade most of the time. Obviously, it can differ a little bit when looking at equities or commodities, but for right now, I'm gonna use this reference in currencies. I find it really interesting to get an understanding on what the central bank's thinking and how these economies are being run. It's that curiosity in me that just pulls me towards it. They're running a business and I'm so interested to see how they go about running that business and why they make the decisions they do. So that's first and foremost. I'm really interested in understanding and then also understanding how investors react based on the little information that is given. Um, so that's the main reason I started looking into fundamentals. Now, when it comes down to my day trading, the things that you guys see more often, um, Fundamentals don't play much in a part uh, in any really part of that strategy. I have seen, however, an increase in profitability since understanding the fundamentals. It gives me more conviction. Uh, I, I execute my positions quicker. I cut my losses quicker. If I actually understand the times that I'm trading and the assets that I'm trading, if I know I'm trading the Aussie dollar against the US dollar, and I have a clear and concise understanding of what these two currencies are doing and what we are expecting over the next week, if we have major announcements, uh, whether we had a major announcement on Friday, so Monday, we're still gonna have some extended volatility. These things are really important to my day trading, so they do have a play there. Uh, but in terms of picking direction or entering and exiting trades, it's very rare that I do unless I'm trading an actual fundamental release. That's majority technical analysis. My fundamental analysis is transitioned to more my long-term positions. So uh, an example for you is over the past few months, I've been heavily shorting the Aussie dollar, US dollar pair, hence why I'm talking about it so much today. Um, I have been shorting the Australian dollar, expecting uh, our interest rates to slow down a lot quicker than what the US will, and, and that strength in the US still being prominent. Um, so far, so good, but we'll see how that follows through. And uh, my long-term positions, I don't usually share too often. It's not something I'm well oiled in, nor do I have the confidence to share, uh, which is why you don't see much of that. Whereas my, my day trading, I'm more than happy to share all that. So um, yeah, short answer, my fundamental doesn't necessarily change or, or impact heavily my day trading decisions. Um, it's more of a passion that I like to understand exactly what happens in the assets that I trade. And I think it's very important for every trader to have a clear and concise understanding on what the asset they're trading truly is and, and what's causing the movements in which they're trying to capitalize on. Last week, I got absolutely slammed by the CPI data. I received bad slippage on my account and ended up losing one of my funded accounts. How do you adjust your trading strategy when you encounter unexpected market events, such as a sudden change in the CPI or the interest rate? Okay, um, all right, where to begin? First of all, Let's start with the CPI was not an unexpected market event, okay? It's very public, um, and I'm quite surprised you didn't know it was coming because it was everywhere in media, uh, literally everywhere. Um, so I'll be very surprised if you, if you considered that a unexpected market event, then 
you need to adjust your trading plan a little bit to at least understand when you're trading, especially something like the US dollar, uh, when we're going to have these high impact news because they're very public, they're planned way in advance and it's coming out at the exact time and they're usually pretty proficient uh, in getting it at that time. So first things first, you need to, to add a trading calendar or an economic calendar uh, to your trading plan because it would have prevented this all through and through. It wasn't unexpected. Um, CPI data came out almost as forecasted as well. We missed by 0.1%, but that's not much in, in terms of CPI. Um, so everything was already priced in. It, it was pretty accurate the way the data was released and it was something most financial analysts were publicly uh, predicting to happen as well. So um, let's get that out of the way. I'm sorry to hear about your account, but that... Um, Look, slippage happens, especially in these high, these high volatility news events. Uh, this is why we need to be so proficient in understanding when these events are due and, and being out of the market or being at least reduced risk to the market during these times because sometimes a stop loss won't be enough to protect you. And uh, as you can see, you can get slippage that's quite bad. Now, I still want to address this conversation in case there's an event that is unexpected, okay? So... Uh, what you've what you've explained there was expected uh, and actually came out pretty much as forecasted as well. So uh, it's a little bit different, but let's go down the line of whether or not it wasn't expected. Okay, let's just imagine that, for example, something like the Ukraine war. Okay, uh, while tensions were heating up, it wasn't necessarily expected that Russia were just going to go and invade. Uh, when that did happen, stock markets went a little bit crazy. Now, you could have been in a position during that time, whether it helps you out or whether it, it causes a loss. How do you react? How do you really situate yourself? Or better for all, how do I react? The way I react, especially for my day trading, my long-term positions, I can take a little bit longer to react. I can, I can get a deeper understanding on what this actually means for different things and then reposition myself correctly, uh, or at least in, in my analysis, what would be correctly. That's key number one, is understanding the new information. Something's just happened. Yes, the market might be going crazy and, and it might send your emotions through the roof, but just sit still understand what has happened. And now if what has happened still aligns to your analysis, it's still, um, you know, whatever it might have been, it's still according to your analysis, then hold your position willy nilly. Might want to reduce some risk to get out of the volatility. But if it co-aligns with your long, this is longer term positions here, guys. Uh, if it co-aligns with your longer term outlook, fantastic, that's best case scenario. Even if it comes a bit down, um, if the analysis is correct, long term, you'll be fine. When it comes down to day trading, nine times out of 10, I am cutting it. I am cutting it instantly. If you're day trading, you're looking at maybe an hour long position, maybe two hour long position, and there's just been some breaking news or there's been a press release or whatever it might be that alters the volatility of the market you entered, that alters exactly how your setup was going to function it means your analysis is no longer valid, okay? Especially if it's based on technical analysis. If we have breaking news, there's a lot of long-term traders, a lot of short-term traders, a lot of investors that are just gonna be buying or selling those assets based on this breaking news and trading the volatility. That means that your short time frame support and uh, supply and demand analysis is gonna become invalid. People don't care about it, okay? What they care about is this breaking information and these great investment opportunities which can come from it. So if you're in day trading and you get a bit of breaking news, usually you might get stopped out or hit your take profit prior to noticing it. But if you do manage to get a little bit of breaking news and it's sending the volatility on the chart all over the place, nine times out of 10, I am cutting it instantly. Whether it's in profit, whether it's in loss, I'm just cutting it because this extended volatility wasn't expected by me, it wasn't part of my analysis and it wasn't part of my plan. Therefore, with this breaking news that has just come to fruition, it may remove my edge from the market. And if I have no edge in the market, I do not want to be in the market. And this goes the same sometimes when you're looking at back tests. If you're back testing a strategy and you can clearly visibly see that in one of your trades there was breaking news or an extended volatility uh, because of some kind of data, 
don't count that data if you're not going to trade it don't count that data win or loss it doesn't matter the what I like to do, and this is the question here, is cut my losses or cut my winners almost instantly as soon as this news is being released. Whether it runs on to be a 20x opportunity, I don't care. It wasn't part of my analysis. It wasn't my, part of my plan. And I know that if I stick to my trading plan and my trading strategy long enough over time, I will generate profit. I'm not trying to make a quick buck. So I cut them, uh, cut those positions very, very quickly. My longer term positions, I'll hold on for a little bit, get an understanding of exactly what's been said, exactly what's going on, and what this could mean for the asset in which I'm trading. And then I'll reassess the situation on whether to scale out of that position, whether to add more, or whether to hold or cut it completely. What advice would you give to a novice trader who is just starting out? Can you provide some tips on how to develop a successful trading strategy and avoid common mistakes? Alrighty, let's uh, let's dive deep, shall we? Let's get involved in this one. This first things first. I, w I want to address something to any new traders, but even our experienced traders, the guys who have been involved in the market um, for, for a while. This is some hard hitting advice I heard a little while ago. Trading, I mean, welcome to the toughest thing you'll ever do. Trading, first of all, welcome to the community, but but welcome to the hardest thing you'll ever do. A lot of people are attracted to trading because of the money aspect, right? We we trade with money to make money, and yes, there's the ability to make a lot of money, and that tends to attract people for the wrong reasons. So I want to really dive into this and and what it means to be a trader and and how difficult it really is. Not in an attempt to scare you off but just to hit home on reality to the fact of, of trading. You are a new trader who is going up against algorithms that are faster than you, traders that are smarter than you, funds that have more money than you, um, insider information that you don't have, people out on the internet to misinform you and your own emotions to guide you in the wrong direction. There is an endless list of everything that is against you and everyone you are going up against are incredible at what they do. They're unethical in a number of different ways. The We can go on and on, okay? This is not an easy game. This is not an easy, oh, this is quite fun. Let's do this. Let's get rich. So the moment you realize who your opponents are in trading, you need to realize that you're not here to make money when you begin. You're here to survive. You've got everything out and everyone out to hurt you and to stop you from becoming a successful trader. Your job is not here, not to sit here and make money. Your job is to survive. So that's how I, I expect you to go about the market. When you go risk on and you're analyzing what is it that you have that is going to prevent those people, those smarter people, the richer people, the quicker AIs, what is it that you have that is going to give you an edge over them? Now, that's hard to develop and it takes time to understand but that's why I want to challenge you. Instead of just going, yes, I'm going to trade. I'm going to learn to trade. Here's my money. Let's click a load of buttons. Do some research. You've got to be at the top of your game to keep performing. Eventually, yes, it'll become a habit and you'll be able to do it as easy as what some of the people make it out to be. But it's definitely not that easy to learn. And it's definitely not that easy still five years in. It takes a very, very long time. So you need to be passionate about this. If you've got no passion, I'm telling you right now, there is many, many other ways to make money and to still make good money. There are many other ways. Trading is definitely not a get rich quick idea. It's tough, it's grueling, and you are up against everything and you need to bring an edge, okay? So first of all, don't, that's not a warning. It may come off as a warning, but I'm not trying to scare you off. I'm just trying to drive home reality, okay? This is the reality of the fact, and I think some people need to hear that sometimes. We're in this because we choose to be in this and because we want to be in this and, and we want to make money this way. It's not easy. And there's plenty of times where I've looked at myself and gone, Jordan, is this really the right decision? And I know a lot of professionals have done the same, okay? In saying that, now you're, you understand that you're, you're here for survival first, profit later. Survival first, profit later. 
start researching, but I mean thoroughly researching. Yes, watching the occasional YouTube video, looking at strategies and how to execute positions is good, but don't just click on the things that excite you, like how much money you can make. Get an understanding of the assets you're actually trading. If you're trading CFDs, understand what CFDs are. You'd be amazed how many people don't understand what it is they're actually trading. If you're trading futures, what assets? How are you trading them? How do they work? Get a deep understanding on how everything works and it'll give you more clarity in understanding strategies. Strategies a whole nother day, a whole nother day, a whole nother dollar. You're gonna hear a lot of different strategies that you think work. You're gonna go and trade them. They might work, but the thing is they won't work for you. As a novice, it's very easy to think in your mind, they're doing it successfully. Let's go replicate what they're doing. And sometimes it may work, but I found in my experience and my journey that the only time I really generated profits and I could be proud of and I could turn in or improve the numbers was when I developed a strategy myself. You can take things from a number of different people you've learned from, maybe some experts, maybe some books, whatever it might be, but you need to go through the process of developing it strategy yourself, going through the back testing, gaining the confidence in the assets you're trading, understanding exactly how you do. It's very in depth. It's a lot of information and it's a lot of things to go through. And it's something we try to help people here uh, at Trade Delicious with because we know how elaborate it is. But the reality of the situation is no one's going to trade for you. No one's going to make you a millionaire for you. And especially in trading, I know it can attract a lazy bunch. I'm guilty of it sometimes myself. But it's definitely not easy. It takes a, I won't say the word, but it takes a lot of work. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it's something to be aware of. Now, if you heard all this and you're still red hot willing to give this a crack, now we're talking because you're in it for the right reasons. You know that you're not going to make money in the next two years. Okay. But from there, the skills you will learn, the ability you will have into the future, now we're talking. Start analyzing different assets, maybe pick just the one asset, get an understanding of why it moves, how it moves, uh, the order flow, the times that it moves, the volatility in which you can expect, and then start playing around with different orders, back testing different strategies, different risk management approaches, different ways of executing positions, and start building your foundations from there. But first, it foremost, it's very important you understand why you're in trading, and then understand exactly what it is you are doing when trading because a lot of people just jump the gun and they start trading things that they have no idea what they're doing and then they get margin called and then before they know it they owe their broker a hundred thousand dollars and they had no idea how they even got there trust me it happens day in day out do your research first understand the assets then start having a look at where you can build a strategy and where you can really try and find an edge in the market how do you balance your trading with other aspects of life, such as family, hobbies, or other work commitments? I'm a, I actually, I, I think I'm quite bad at this. But the whole uh, work-life balance thing is, is definitely not one of my strong suits. So yeah, I'm probably not the best person to be asking for advice, but um, definitely having allocated time to do your other hub, other hobbies, or your um, or you know, spend time with your family or something. It's really vital that you ensure that you're still spending time with those, and you do have time to switch off. So through the week, especially being here in Australia, uh, the afternoons can be quite busy for me. Uh, we're we're an international business here at Trade Delicious, so uh, the other team members are waking up as I'm starting to switch off for the night. So I have to reach out or or reply uh, to different questions, and maybe answer a couple of different phone calls, do live streams at at times of the night where most people are usually switching off. So through the week, it, it's quite difficult for me to balance that, and it's something I need to work on too um, in that aspect. Weekends, I try to compensate for it. So over the weekend, uh, computer, phones, everything completely shut off. Uh, I disappear um, completely over the weekend. I'm sure my, my co-workers will tell you a bit about that. Uh, definitely just 
like off the face of the earth. Uh, won't be around over the weekend. And then Monday, I kind of recap and have a look at what happened, which is where the market overview on a Monday uh, comes from in you know, on Trade Delicious. It's because that's what I do anyway as I try to look at what ha- what's happened over the weekend and recap last week. It's, it's all about priorities, right? It, it's not necessarily the fact that trading requires you to be on 24-7 in order to make money. A lot of people, and this is something I've really noticed out there, is especially on Twitter. Uh, now, Twitter is never really a good spot to look for any type of trading advice or anything. There's a lot of ego on Twitter. But regardless of the fact, um, you see heaps of people boating about how they only do maybe one hour of work, two hours of work a day. They make their, their money and they go off and they do whatever. Um, the same people will then go tweet about and say they're built different because they do 16 hours a day of work. So you're getting this contrasting opinion here. I don't believe that the amount of time you put into trading does necessarily correlate into profit. And I do believe uh, there's a thing of too much time, which is why I cut down how I trade uh, into day trading in the way that I do. Not only could I find an edge there, but the main reason I started looking for an edge there was so I could spend more time away from the charts. Now, different business endeavors and different moves that we make uh, cause different collision effects for these what we're trying to balance and work in life. And to be honest, it's an, it's an element I'm not very good at. And it's not an element where you really want to listen to my advice because I manage and we get through, but um, it definitely could be better. So I actually raise you with this question. I think what we should do together, now whether it's me getting grilled, whether it's someone else getting grilled or or whatever it might be, we should sit down with a professional, maybe Louise or, or, or someone that has the psychological ability to really help us develop a bit of a balance, maybe even like a therapist. And we should have a look into exactly how we should balance our family, our hobbies, and our trading, because sometimes it can all correlate into one, especially depending on the time zone you're in, and you don't want it because it gets unhealthy. But personally, for me, weekends uh, absolutely switch off everything. Go outside, get something to uh, go spend some time with your family, go to a, a rugby game, you know, just really go experience life over that weekend. Do as much as you can through the week, obviously. Don't, don't just become a zombie through the week. Uh, but that weekend's a big reset for me. But yeah, definitely um, probably not the best person to be asking for advice on that. But that's my honest opinion. And uh, that's, that's where I sit. There you have it, guys. Another episode of Email Exchange is done and dusted. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who sent their emails this week. I hope you enjoyed these questions. I picked the best of the bunch, and I try and run you through them to the best of my ability. Remember, if you want some of your questions answered or you have any comments, chuck them in the YouTube comments below or send an email to ee at tradedelicious.com. That's ee at tradedelicious.com. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you next week for another episode of Email Exchange.